360 grams of self-raising flour, 533 grams of granulated sugar, half a cup of cocoa powder which is 50 grams and I'm using a bit of baking soda and salt. I did In off with three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil. I'm gonna put that in. Then we have one cup of buttermilk. I got my three large eggs, and finally some coffee. I'm gonna use one cup and a half. add in some sour cream that's half a cup of sour cream and you just want to give this a good mix oh got some vanilla as well <laughs> oh my god you just want to give this a good mix with a whisk Um, three of my sandwich pans. These are and flouring them so that my cake doesn't stick to them. And I try to measure the batter equally between the three uh, tins. It came to around like 620 grams, roughly. I didn't. I wasn't able to match it all, but oh well we got a rough measurement and then these um i don't even know what these are called but you just wet these and put them around your cake and it just makes the edges really moist it doesn't like dry them up and we're going to put these in the oven for 40 minutes at 170 degrees celsius right so now onto the buttercream i'm using 350 grams of unsalted butter sure I leave it at room temperature so it can get a bit soft and you really want to whisk this until it becomes a much paler color like this and now we're going to go in with some icing sugar I used I think 720 grams of icing sugar and I'm just going to beat this in um, in small parts now to avoid this going everywhere like literally everywhere I kind of mix in a little by little and on a really low speed and unfortunately my low speed on my hand at my electric whisk is not that low but it works it seems to work so just bear that in mind guys it really helps so then when I was done mixing I put some of the buttercream aside just a little bit like a dollop just aside for the decoration you see it you'll see later so then I'm just going in with some cocoa powder I put 30 grams of cocoa powder I had like a little bit of coffee left so literally a tablespoon of it um, and then I'm going to go in with some of my um, vanilla extract which smells amazing and we're going to do a quarter cup of whipping cream I just want to give this a good mix I find this so satisfying look at that look at everything just combining so now I'm going in with a bit of dark chocolate. This is 45 grams of dark chocolate, 72%, with two tablespoons of double cream. And you put it in a microwave for like 30 seconds and it just becomes this thick paste. I didn't put all of it in, I put like half of it because I don't want the buttercream to be too strong. I'm not the biggest fan. Actually, I'm not a fan at all of dark chocolate. I mean, who is? It just tastes nasty. <laughs> it's nasty. But I'm just scraping out the edges and making sure everything's nicely mixed. And we're going to put this aside. I took 10 Ferrero Rochers because obviously this is the theme of the cake. Um, and I took 10 of them and crushed it into this basically. And I think I took like three or four big tablespoons. Just enough to like fill it in between my um, cakes. Um, so like just two layers. So I just, whatever you feel comfortable with, I put like three or four big tablespoons. And I'm just mixing it with our crushed Ferrero Rocher like so and if you're into baking you guys need these spatulas because they're amazing like, I can't bake without this I need to buy more I've only got two and I feel like I need more 
So once that's done, I'm just gonna put this to the side and we're gonna start getting our cakes out. So I let my cakes cool for like 10 minutes before I started doing this, they were still quite hot. Um, I kind of took a knife and scraped the edges and then kind of like tapped it to get it out of the tin. I don't know what it is with me, but I always seem to mess this bit up. I don't know if I'm too rough, but this one came out pretty well. Like with a few taps, it came out. And you want it to be still kind of hot for it to slip out of the tin, not completely cool down. I feel like it would be harder to get it out. So this one was struggling. This is just real time, guys. No joke. Um, so I did, I scraped around the edges again and that just seemed to do the job and it came out easily. Now this one broke. Look at that but you know you can always fix it don't worry so i got this thing i don't know what is this the thing that you fry your eggs with i don't know what it's called now i know the names but it just never comes to my mind when i'm doing voiceovers or when i'm filming but anyways i just placed that on top of the cake and voila it was fixed don't be disheartened guys you can always fix the issue so i let that cool completely and now i am leveling one of the cakes because one of them kind of had a mountain and you want them straight because if you keep that it's gonna make your cake look dodgy so i'm just leveling it to the same size as the cake so only part of the cake came off not the whole top The reason why I put those damp cloths around the cake tins when, before putting them in the oven is to avoid this, but I don't know why this one didn't work, I don't know. But guys, I ordered a little mini palette knife. I had a massive one, which is helpful, but it's too big. This was a lifesaver, it's so precise. Anyways, I got my cake turntable and a cake plate that I got on Amazon. I put a little bit of buttercream to stick the first layer of cake on. Look, I don't even know what the hell I'm saying right now. And we're starting with our first layer of buttercream. The one where we mixed um, with the Ferro Rocher and we're just going to smooth this and do a nice thick layer of it. Not too thick though because obviously I'm trying to take the feedback of my family and they said don't put too much, it's too sweet. <laughs> I mean it's a cake, what, what, what else is it supposed to be? And now we're going in with the second layer and with our second layer of Ferro Rocher buttercream. So satisfying guys. Now we're going to put the last layer on top and to be honest three layers is actually quite tall I don't know how the hell I did six layers um, With the rainbow cake, but now we're gonna put a thin layer of the buttercream So this is the smooth portion that I kept aside um, and it's, it's just not really it's kind of like a crumb coat but because I didn't carve out the cakes and trim them there's not that many crumbs but this is just going to help lock everything in place and it's just going to make smoothing your buttercream afterwards so much easier um so yeah i'm just doing a quick like smooth layer just to you know lock it in place think of this as your primer yeah that's a perfect explanation and then we're going to go in with the foundation afterwards but we're going to let the primer sit a bit so we're going to put it in the fridge for 30 minutes now we're back again <laughs> and we're going to put the foundation on so this is nice a good thick layer of buttercream and yeah it just went on smoothly and i'm just going to put a bunch of dollops and evenly smooth it roughly around the edges because we're going to use our cake smoother afterwards so here's our little white dollop of buttercream that comes into play i'm just going to randomly dot this on the sides of the cake my goal was to get this kind of like artistic look you know but it just didn't really work out it kind of did but not to how i wanted it did just didn't turn out how i wanted it to be basically so um but you guys you guys know what i mean see look this is what i was trying to go for but i kept smoothing and it was just all mixing together um and i got a really large cake smoother from amazon i'll try and link all my um tools that i use they're so affordable it's a pain to have it all have them all but i wouldn't be able to do my cake without these tools um so now i'm just like smoothing and taking off any of the excess so basically the white's completely gone. It's done this cool blend, like a slight blend, but I wanted more of that kind of blend, like right here. But it just disappeared afterwards because I kept smoothing away. So here, 
because I've done like a nice smooth layer you want to take off any excess off your um, cake smoother before you go back at the cake again and I'm doing the same here I'm using my palette knife from outwards towards the inside of the cake I'm just smoothing the edges so we get a nice corner like a nice edge on the rim so yeah I'm just trying to clean up the cake basically but every time you touch your cake and there's buttercream wipe it off basically at this step because you're just gonna mess it up even more so here I just wiped off the excess and went back at it again I don't even know if I'm making sense so here I made some chocolate ganache for the drip I'm just putting some in a like sandwich bag and I just use a mix of dark chocolate and milk chocolate for this and a random amount of double cream and it just made this drip um, just play around with it and test it on the side of a cup before you start dripping but I think this was like the most perfect drip and it's so weird because I randomly measured this um, but you can always play around with it like if you if it's too thick add more double cream and warm it up in the microwave it's the quickest thing ever but I'm so happy with this drip I just trimmed a little corner of the sandwich bag by the way and yeah you want to be quite patient here I'm like fast forwarding it but be patient with this you don't want to mess it up you come too far to mess it up guys so just to dry the drip and so that it doesn't touch the bottom of the cake I'm just air like fanning it so it can dry quickly I had a little mistake on the top like a dent so I fixed that so here I'm taking a piping bag and I took a one of these heads that I wanted like it kind of creates those little swells and in cling film I'm just going to put some of the chocolate buttercream along with the rest of the white buttercream and we're just going to wrap this up like this like a little package and then cut the edge like the end and we're going to put this into the piping bag and it's just so much easier and this is just going to create a nice swirl effect with the two colors and just swatch it on like on the side of a bowl or something and then go in and start doing your swirls i mean i'm not the perfect at this to be honest like measuring how much distance should be between each swirl but it turned out okay in the end and it looks so pretty like the white and the chocolate blend it was so nice I, I was so proud of myself I mean I didn't invent this but it, it looks so so pretty and then I filled the edges with like a little dollop of buttercream and on the little dollops I stuck a Ferrero Rocher on top and literally this just finished the cake for me it's looked